can't hear you. Good evening, and thank you once again for attending this year's uh, ceremony. Would you all remain standing and join with me as we salute our nation? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may sit down. Welcome, everyone. I am Commissioner Kathy DiFilippo, and I am delighted to see all of you here today uh, for the 21st anniversary of the terrible attacks on 9-11. Allow me to introduce our clergy member, giving us the invocation for this 9-11 remembrance for our very own, from our very own Reverend Herman Scott. For almost 12 years, Reverend Scott has been giving spiritual advice and religious service involving many denominations to our officers and our staff at the Morris County Correctional Facility, as well as to the inmates. Reverend Scott has been an active member with the Calvary Baptist Church Prison Ministry in Morristown. He provides not only guidance to people who are incarcerated, but he also assists their families and their children with everything from finding public aid to getting school supplies. Reverend Scott holds many leadership roles with NAACP of Morris County, and he can always be found involved with programs supporting children, human rights, and people in need. It is my honor to introduce to you today, Reverend Scott. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord, that has been our dwelling place in all generations. For the mountains were brought down, and ever the earth was formed, you were God. Today we come thanking you for your amazing grace and your sustaining power that has kept us these 21 years. We were wounded in our hearts, but you would not allow our demise. So today we remember those who have lost loved ones. We also remember those who are the lost. We pray today, God, for their strength. We pray, God, for your strength to give them courage through and with their tremendous grief. We pray for them, that, they would, that you would keep them, and that you would give them what they are definitely need, and that is our support. We pray for our country that we might remember and never forget, because history that is forgotten is tragically repeated. So we pray on this day and for the days to come that we would remember. We pray, God, for your divine grace, for your peace, and to remind us that you are our refuge, to remind us that you alone are our security, 
help us to forever stand together in solidarity. For this nation is indivisible. And we pray for America and Americans everywhere that you will protect and guide them in the name of the one that matters the most, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we all say together, amen. Good evening, everyone. I am Commissioner Director Typhoon Salen. On behalf of the Morris County Board of County Commissioners, I thank you for joining us for our annual remembrance of the people we lost, including many of the heroes who responded to the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. I want to thank all the dignitaries, public officials, and special guests with us, too many to try to name. Before I continue, let's give it up with all the first responders here today. <clears throat> However, your presence year after year continues to show the world that we remain united as a community and a nation. No act of terror will stop us in America from governing ourselves through the messy yet wonderful process known as a free democracy. And there's no better nation on earth because of that. Most importantly, I want to thank first responders here and welcome the families and friends of the people we lost in the 9-11 attacks. We're honored to have you with us. 
Today is the 21st anniversary of the attacks. It has been a long time. An entirely new generation has grown up since that terrible day. Our vow to never forget is challenged by every passing year as many of our family, friends, and colleagues who witnessed the destruction and deaths grow older move from here and pass on. It makes me think of our dear friend Emerson Crooks right there, a Vietnam veteran who spoke when Vietnam Moving Wall came to the county college this summer. Emerson begged us not to forget the service that took the lives of so many of his generation. He talked of seeing many visitors to the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. recently. But there were far fewer visitors at the memorials for the Korean War and World War II, and no one at the World War I Memorial. We say never forget, but time takes a toll. What happened on 9-11 and the lessons we learned will only be remembered if our future generations continue to carry the torch. Today, I am uplifted by what I see around me. I see new faces at this sacred ceremony. I see young faces in our procession of firefighters and EMS crews who marched up Hanover Avenue and in their ranks were the United States Naval Sea Cadet Corps out of Picatinny Arsenal. We have 15 to 20 of them right behind me, all between the ages of 10 and 18 years old. They were not yet born when we were attacked. Yet they're here making certain 9-11 is remembered as always. It is the involvement of these young people that gives real strength and meaning to our vow to never forget, which bring me, brings me to our keynote speaker. He also is a part of the younger generation, someone who represents what we lost in 9-11, as well as what our nation found in terms of strength and resolve to carry on. Carl Asara Jr. is a New York firefighter whose father and namesake Carl Sr. died on 9-11 with 14 other brave firefighters on Engine 54, Ladder 4, and Battalion 9. Manhattan lost an entire shift as they responded to devastation unfolding at the Twin Towers. Carl Jr. was about 13 years old at the time. That terrible act of evil on 9-11 took away his dad, who left behind five children and their loving mother. Yet it spawned something good, something almost unbelievable. Carl was the first of his siblings to join the fire department of New York when he grew up. He was followed by his brother, Matthew, and then his brother and sister, Mark and Rebecca, who spoke here last year. Four of Carl Sr.'s children are now out there saving lives and helping people on a daily basis. What the terrorists took away from a Sarah family is irreplaceable. But what a Sarah family has given back to America also is irreplaceable. And we thank them with all of our hearts. Carl, thank you for joining us. Please come up to the podium. Thank you, everybody, for uh, gathering here tonight. I, uh, I'm very blessed, very honored to be here with you all, uh, to remember those that we lost. Um, leading up to tonight, I, I, you know, I was right, trying to write a speech, trying to get something together. Um, my girlfriend Jane should tell you all about it. Uh, for me, it was kind of all over the place. I'm, I'm very uh, particular in, in how I want to deliver what I want to say, and, and I figured the best way to go about it would be to just get up here and speak, just get up here and tell you you know, what life was like, you know, what happened and, you know, kind of where things are at now. Um, 
you know, uh, I come from a big family. Uh, I'm one of six kids, five boys, one girl. Uh, my father, Carl, my mom, Louisa, uh, they, didn't, they didn't have it easy by any means, you know, with all of us uh, running around. We're all close in age. Uh, it was, you know, from t at that time when my father passed, it was from 20 years old down to seven. So uh, I have a twin brother, uh, you know, two younger brothers, three younger brothers and a sister. I always make fun of my twin brother. I'm a minute older, so I get them every time with that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we learned that you didn't need material things in life to be happy. You know, my, my dad worked his tail off to, to see to it that we had everything we needed. Food on the table, a roof over our heads. My mother, she, same thing. She came here from Brazil as a young woman uh, to find a better life, you know, not only for herself, but, uh, you know, for her family and, and everything like that. And, and that she did, you know. I, I, uh, like I said, one of six kids, you're not always going to get what you want every Christmas, you know. Uh, and uh, just in, in particular, I remember one Christmas I wanted a uh, Tennessee Titans, my favorite football team as a kid. I wanted an Eddie George jersey, number 27, baby blue. And I remember Christmas Eve sneaking downstairs, <laughs> peeling up, peeling the wrapper, you know, to what felt like a, a shirt to me. I saw the baby blue. I was so excited. Number 27, Eddie George. You know, all my friends in school are going to be jealous, right? Come to find out the next day, it was number 26. It was a FUBU jersey, and there was nobody's name on the back. You know, and that's just how it was. I, I think I got a, a nice starter jacket and a couple pairs of socks, you know. But uh, we had enough. We had each other, and, and that's how it was. You know, my dad always took time to, to be there for us with, with everything. I, I remember as a kid, he'd, he'd play music for us. My dad was very uh, talented musically. He liked to play the clarinet, the guitar, the saxophone, piano. And those are things that were just, as a kid, you don't even appreciate in the moment. But, you know, when you look back, and those are like the best times of your life. You know, you're sitting there with your family, your siblings, and you don't even realize those moments uh, when, when, when you're in them. Um, you know, so he would he would sit down, he would draw pictures with us, he would play games with us, he, he'd go out back, toss the football with us, he'd play basketball, he'd be in the pool, he'd take us to work, to the firehouse, for Christmas parties, all, all these things. And it was wonderful. I, lo I loved my family. I loved hanging with my dad. I was so proud. Um, you know, not only the fact that he was a firefighter, but he was my dad, you know, and, and uh, he was present. He was in our lives, you know. Uh, in my eyes, he could do no wrong. You know, he's such a good man. He was... I mean, he lived 39 years, a young man. I, I'm 34. I'll, I'll be at his age in, in less than five years. And it's shocking to me how much he completed in his life. You know, it's it's hard not to compare yourself to your father and, and, and the, the, the people that kind of got you here. And uh, not, like I say, uh, you know, I said this the other day, I, I'm just proud to be his son and, uh, you know, to, to be part of his family, you know, to be part of my own family, my, my brothers, my sister, my mother. Um. I got a little emotional before I came up. I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I, I it didn't really hit me all day until right now. So, uh, you know, just just bear with me with everything. But uh, I have a lot of great memories of my father from when he, when I was a kid. Um, just being present. Uh, my beautiful and lovely girlfriend Jane here. She remembers my dad when we were in uh, middle school. I, I want to say sixth grade. My dad would come to uh, the school and he would bring his firefighter stuff and teach us about fire safety. We would have like a camp, a little trailer with fake smoke and then have the kids crawl through. And, you know, I was so proud because that was, that was my dad, you know, he was uh, giving back. And, uh, you know, when you're a kid, like, yeah, oh, that's my dad. He's a firefighter, no big deal. He saves lives and kitty cats and all that, you know, it was, it was nice. Um, you know, and, and for me, I, again, I said this the other day, um, my dad was like Superman, my mom too. They, nothing could break them, you know. Uh, I only saw my father cry once. We were in church. Uh, I think it was right around Christmas, I want to say. And I saw a tear you know, coming down his face. I said, hey, Pop. I used to call him Pop. You know, hey, Pop, what's wrong? And he just looked at me and smiled and said, I'm OK. You know, I, I still, to this day, think about that moment sometimes because that, that's really the only time I ever saw my dad upset. You know, he, he always had a brave face, always had a smile, always laughing, always joking. We, we were upstate at my mother's. Uh, Jane and I were watching home videos, and my dad was uh, recording, you know, family family events, family parties, and he always had a little little quip, a little qu comment about somebody. And uh, even though my dad's been, you know, been out of my life for 21 years, Jane said to me, she's like, "You're more like your father than you know, with all the little jokes and the things that that you say." And 
Uh, that made me feel nice, you know, because even though he hasn't been here, um, I feel like I get to know him a little bit more and more uh, every day. You know, I learn new things. I, I meet a lot of his friends who, you know, had he been here, maybe I wouldn't get to know, you know. Um, uh, that day, 9-11, when I was, I was a kid, I was, I was 13 years old. My father was off. He worked for a friend. That's a common thing, you know, in, in any, uh, you know, civil servant job. And uh, he he went in to work, and I didn't know this until recently, but him and my mother had spoke. The first plane that hit the tower, my dad called my mom as he normally does on, on his when he gets to work. To work, he said, uh, "Honey, I'm, I'm here." And then right then he saw the, the second plane hit the south tower, or, or the, you know, hit the tower. He said, "I'm I gotta go down to the trade center, you know, honey. I'll I'll, I'll call you later. I'll probably be down there all day." And he wasn't lying, you know. He said, "I love you to her," and and I'm happy for that. I'm happy that they at least said, "I love you." You know, was their final words together. You know, uh, as I said, I was 13. I was I was lost. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. You know, um, I was the oldest at home, and my mom. It was tough on her to to see her sad to to see her try to put on a brave face for us. You know, I'm very fortunate to have the the fire department family to have. The, the, the friends and the people I've had in my life over the years to be there for us and just to listen to, to kind of take you outside of yourself because life gets hard, you know? And, and, and I remember a friend of mine, his father died of cancer. We were the same age, you know, 13, you know, and uh, he's like, oh man, Carl, what happened? He was much worse. And I looked at him and said, no, it's not. Both our dads aren't here, man, you know? And that's how I looked at it, you know? Like I, I for years it was tough to properly you know, grieve and, and to be, you know, to feel what I wanted to feel because I felt like I had to put on a face for other people, for, you know, the New York Post or for media or whatever. But um, over time, I, I realized that, you know, just being with my family, that's the happiest that, that I can be. That's where I can really be myself. And, and I'm blessed, truly, to have, like, Jane has been in my life for 27 years. You know, a lot of my friends um, that I have that are close, they've been in my life for a long time, and I've made many, many new friends along the way. Um, there's many opportunities that I would never, I wouldn't be standing in front of all you fine people right now if it wasn't for my father. And yes, I'd give anything to have him here for another half an hour. But I, I try to change my perspective about everything in life. You know, I try to look at it through someone else's point of view. I had my dad for 13 years of my life, and I'm so lucky for that. And I'm so lucky that a part of him is still with me to this day. Um, as I said, I have a twin brother. He he reminds me of my dad in a lot of ways too. He's, he's very calm. He's very cool. Very collected. He's he's always got an outside opinion that maybe you didn't think of if the issue comes up. Um, my younger brother Matthew, him and my father shared the same love of the outdoors, hunting, working with your hands, and uh, you know my sister too. Her and my her and my dad, they're compassionate. Always stopped and took time to listen to other people to help somebody, give you a shirt off their back. Mark, his. Uh, you know, he seeks out adventure, my youngest brother, just like my dad. You know, it's, it's never a, a dull moment in his life. And, of course, my mom. You know, my mom has nothing but, but wonderful stories about my father that I, I'm so fortunate to hear. You know, for a long time, I, I didn't want to hear him. I didn't want to hear him because he was too painful. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready. Um, but now I can stand here and, and, and safely say that my father is alive and well in, in all of his kids, and my mother definitely, in the stories, um, in the lives that he's touched, there's not a single person that has come up to me and talked to me about my father that has anything bad to say. You know, I, I think maybe he used to cheat in checkers or, or something, but, uh, you know, he was a good guy, and I, I got that to be proud of, you know, really. Um, uh, as I said, I'm lucky, and I do apologize for not coming prepared with a speech. I just figured this is, uh, you know, this was best. This is what I felt was best. And, uh, you know, for a long time, for many years, I, I, this plagued me. This one day, this one day in my life would plague me. And, uh, you know, I, I've been talking to people about it. Uh, and I, I realized that I'm not going to let one day ruin the rest of my life. I, I, I've, you know, I have a lot going on for myself. You know, I have people in my family, people in my life that love me. You know, I took on one of the greatest jobs in the world for me, you know, for me. Um, I, I was always proud of the fact that my dad was a firefighter, taking me to work with him always coming home happy with a smile on his face, you know? Him and my mom were, were, were the best. They were, they were great together. And, uh, you know, really, I never saw my dad angry. I, ne I think 
once my parents got in an argument and I was so scared. I, I told my teacher in like the grade or something, I said, I think my parents are going to get a divorce. You know, and uh, she called home and my mom whooped me a little bit cause for, uh, for sharing our business, you know. So I learned a lesson there. I did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what happens at home stays at home. But uh, yeah, it was he's a great example of a lot of things. You know, he was just very charismatic, very caring. I, I don't, I don't think I take enough time. I mean, maybe you know everybody has lost somebody, and it's easy to, you know, to implode and to to fall into your own thoughts and feelings. Woe is me, right? But I don't think enough of us take the time to truly appreciate what those people have really done for us, you know, and, and, and that's more of where I'm at in life right now. And I'm not saying it's right, but it's right for me. You know, I am very happy. I'm very fortunate. I'm very lucky to have the father that I had, you know, a big moment, a big pivotal moment in my life was when I turned 26, because when I turned 26, that was 13 years without my father. I had him 13. Now I was without him for 13. And that was a pivotal, pivotal moment. I was afraid. I, I, I didn't know which way to go in life. I, I, who was going to tell me if I was doing right, if I was doing wrong, you know? And uh, I mean, I have a conscience, I know, yes, but um, everybody needs their father at some point. And I'm fortunate that I've always had him with me. You know, he's not here physically, but uh, when I pray, when i having a rough moment, when I'm unsure, when I'm, that's who I talk to. That's why I look for guidance, you know? Um, and I'm unfortunate. I'm fortunate because when I think of him, it's really nothing but good things, you know. It's painful, you know. His birthday's next month, Thanksgiving, Christmas, but life goes on, you know. I still have a big family. Uh, I have a beautiful niece, two nieces and a nephew. I have all my siblings still here. My mother, my, my lovely girlfriend as well, Jane, and you know, I can choose to to be stuck in the past, stuck on that one day, but. Or I can choose to change my perspective and be happy, be fortunate, be grateful. You know, a lot of horrific things occurred that day. We lost a lot of people, yes. But a lot of valiant and courageous and heroic things happened that day, too. Um, there's a lot of people out there in the world that wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those people that gave up their lives to help other people, you know. Um, you know, my dad was just a regular guy to me. He was my dad, you know, for a long time it took me. It took me a really long time to say, hey, my dad's a hero. Yeah, my dad's this. My dad's just my dad, and that's how I wanted to remember him. It's just my dad, you know. I'm sure he didn't wake up to go to work that morning and say, you know, I'm going to be, my name's going to be, you know, stone forever in the stat, you know. He was just an ordinary guy doing an extraordinary thing, just as, just as those other guys, you know, men and women did that day too. And I'm proud of that because when I go to work, I know my dad's watching me, you know, I want to come home. I do. Um, God forbid if that doesn't happen. At least I know that, you know, I gave it everything I had, but I, I couldn't be more proud. Like I said, of my family, my dad and, uh, and where I come from, you know, he's, he's taught me many things. Uh, each and one of my, each and every one of my siblings has as well. You know, um, it's life has had its ups and downs as I'm sure we're all accustomed to, but, I I, tr I truly couldn't be more happy than to be standing here right now to have this opportunity to, to speak with all of you. Um, I was a little nervous before I came up. I'm still a little nervous now. I'm not sure if you can tell. I'm, sure I'm doing a pretty good job of hiding it. But, uh, you know, um, I wanted to come up and, and like, I wrote, I wrote a lot in my notebook I have, that I have in the trailer. And I was like, how, how can I end with, with something like profound or like, you know, that they're gonna remember me by, and then I, you know, as I got closer and closer, I'm like, I don't have to do that, you know. I came here to seek my heart, to speak my heart, and tell my story. And uh, you know, my life has been a roller coaster, you know, things. But at this very moment, I'm I'm so blessed, I'm so happy um, to have lived the things that I've lived. You know, my, um, many of my experiences would have never have happened if my father you know, had never given his life. And, and as I said, I, I would much rather have him, but, you know, things happen for a reason. And he's always going to be with me. He's always with my mom, my siblings as well. And I'm so proud every time I go to work and put on my jacket. I'm proud to have the last name of Saro. I, I'm so fortunate when someone comes up to me 
at work and says, hey, you're not related to Carl, are you? You know, I said, yeah, I am. You know, they look too much alike. If you see the picture of my dad, he's some blue eyes, black hair, looks a uh, very strapping young Italian man. He used to take me to the firehouse as a kid, and uh, I had a little afro, and I'd be running in there and, uh, you know, eating all the food and stuff, all the little cheese puffs they had. And uh, they, the guys would be like, who are you? I said, oh, that's my dad over there. And my dad was like, I don't know that kid. You know? And uh, <laughs> so they kicked me out. They put me right in the street. You know? But uh, I, knew the, I knew the code to get in, so. I come right back in, and uh, you know they're like, "What do you do?" You know, it just—it was like a, it was funny. It was a funny thing, and you know, all those little moments. I look back, and um, I'm wearing this Grateful Dead pin because my dad was a big Grateful Dead fan. I—I uh, I got one for my little brother. It was the green dancing bear. If anyone's familiar with the Grateful Dead, and it reminded me—it's it, so silly and so like so, it's so funny how such a small thing can remind you of, of a moment in your life that you never thought you'd ever remember or you didn't think had any type of significance at all. Uh, so I got it specifically to come today. Whatever, I got this pin. It came in a pack of three. It came with one of the green bears. And instantly I thought of uh, my mom was in Brazil in 2001. She took half the kids. My dad took the other half, my brother and I. But he had to wait because he had to work. We were in Whitestone. We were at like the supermarket or something, and I remember getting the Jolly Ranchers. And Dad took all the green apple ones, and for me, those are the worst flavor. And that's what that that little pin reminded me of that. that his favorite Jolly Rancher was the green apple. And in my head, I'm like, wow, that's still to this day, it's a mystery to me how he could like those. But what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know, um, like I said, it's, it's it's really you know, it's not like a, a it's just a memory that I had with my dad. And for a long time, I struggled to have any good memories because. Uh, of the, the, you know, the tragic things that happened that day. But uh, I remember that whole trip in Brazil, you know, um, that was the first time that I had left the country. That's the first time that I went down there with my whole family. As I said, that's where my mom's from. Um, and that was the last time that I, would, I was going, you know, because that was August of 2001, school was about to start. And, uh, you know, it's, I still remember that trip and, and as many times before it. I, I know I'm a little all over the place with this, but um, I, I did want to go back to that, that FUBU jersey that I got. for My birthday was in June, the following year, so that was for Christmas. I got that nice FUBU jersey. <laughs> the following June, it was my birthday, I did get a nice uh, Tennessee Titan jersey, Eddie George, number 27. It was red. I, I, would, I let it slide. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, my dad had a way of making things happen, you know, maybe not then, but, but later. And uh, even, even, you know, this is something that I've been kind of echoing the whole time. Even though he's not here, there's a lot in my life that has happened because of him. You know, a lot of good things that I attribute to him. Um, this opportunity, for instance, you know, to have the, uh, the head on my shoulders that I do, to have the perspective that I do, it's all because of him. And uh, just to close, um, what I've been saying here, I want to echo a little bit of the same sentiment that my sister did last year when she came to speak. She said that um, you're only truly gone when your name is mentioned for the last time. And if that's true, then, you know, my dad, the guys that he worked with and, and went on and passed with that day, they're going to live forever, you know, through all the stories, through all the memories, through all the photos, you know, all the memories that we have of them. You know, they, they did, they were, you know, a lot of people like to, you know, your dad is a hero, your dad is, for me, you know, he's my dad, he's always going to be my dad, you know, and that's how I choose to, to remember him. And that, for anyone that, that has lost anybody, it's, it's however you decide to remember that person, you know, whatever brings you peace, you know, I, I choose for it not to bring me pain anymore because I, I've, despite the fact that I haven't had my father for the past 21 years, I've had a pretty great life and I attribute it to him. I attribute it to my mother and all the people in my life that have just been there and, uh, you know, cared, stopped and listened, you know, and, and I try to repay that any way that I can going forward, you know, and by listening to people's stories, by offering an ear, you know, when, when nobody feels like they have one and, and just slowing down. I think a lot of us, especially myself, being from New York, I, I'm definitely guilty of this. You, you, you have a knack for rushing through life, you know, you want to where you're going very quickly. I was in uh, Florida recently. Uh, where I was on vacation with Jane, and 
people were so nice. You know, they took the time to ask me how I was doing. And I'm like, oh, I just want coffee, please. Like, hurry up. You know, and in my head, I'm like, what am I doing? You know, like I, these people are so nice. And here I, you know, and so a lot of a lot of moments in life, even just getting a cup of coffee, I choose to, to take it as like a lesson. You know, I, I was walking by someone having an argument on the phone. People don't change. That was the one thing I heard. And I was like, are you talking to me? You know, and uh, yeah, I took that. I don't know why I remember it, but I do. And I'm like, I'm going to prove you wrong, sir. You know, I'm never going to see you again. You know, but uh yeah, it's. Uh, I've learned a lot of things in life, and, and go, going having gone through everything that I've gone through, it, it's only made me, uh, I think, more receptive to to learn new things, and that you know life goes on. No matter how you choose, life is going to go on with or without you. So you got to kind of roll with it. You got to adapt, and you got to kind of you know pick yourself up from time to time. It's not always easy. You know, today is a day where I expect to kind of feel you know bad. And I was fine all day until I came here. I'm not blaming any of you fine people, but the guy who preceded me, he, he got me. He unzipped me. And uh, it's for a good reason, you know. Um, I'm fortunate. I'm blessed. I'm happy that, I'm happy that I can still shed a tear for my dad, you know. Um, I, I really am. He, he was a great man. I, I really, truly wish that I could be with him again. And not just for me. I mean, I, I wish I could introduce him to all of you guys. He was funny. He was hilarious. He was, you know, handsome. He was charming. You know, he swooped my mom right off her Brazilian feet, man, I'll tell you. Um, you know, that's, I choose to remember him in a lot of good ways because it's important for me. It's important for his grandchildren that he's never met. You know, my niece, my little niece that's here from Brazil, I love to talk to her about my dad, her grandfather, you know, and um, it, it's it's such a prideful thing. Um, yeah, I, I really, I can go on forever. I really can, but I think I'm going to choose to wrap it up right here because I think there's still a whole half of the ceremony left. But I, again, I just want to thank you all for having me uh, here today. Uh, I, I definitely am grateful and I'm very proud to be here and speak to you all. I, I'm proud every time I put on my uniform to be a part of the New York City Fire Department. I'm proud to be Carlos Saro Jr. Um, so many things, you know, I can go on forever, like I said, but I think now's a good time to kind of wrap it up. And uh, I just want to thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. And Carl, I know you said you, you weren't prepared. You, you're surrounded left and right by elected officials, and we make speeches a lot. I gotta say, we're all sitting here admiring how well delivered and and your comments are because they came from heart. And uh, we're just sitting here all admiring and probably taking a few notes how we could do a little better in the future. So, Carl, I want to thank you uh, and your family who uh, turned this into a positive, as you said, uh, turned tragedy into positive. Inspirational remarks that you made for us here today. We're truly grateful uh, to what each of you have done and what you have continued to do since your father made the ultimate sacrifice, uh, saving lives on 9-11. And I want to thank everyone who's out here today for joining us for our annual gathering that we continue to remember 9-11. And it grows more important that we do every year. The devastation of that horrible day, which was almost incomprehensible, even as it was unfolding, cannot fade from our collective memory especially as we have, as the director referenced earlier, a new generation who has no firsthand recollection of 9-11. We must instill in them the importance not only of honoring and remembering those that we lost, but also of remembering that the price of freedom is constant vigilance. And if we let our guard down, it can happen again. But the rest of us have many daily reminders least of which are the family members, friends and neighbors, those who are no longer here, no longer next to us. They're missing the family milestones and we're missing seeing them grow old. You know, when 9-11 happened, the world united behind our country and a number of world leaders made comments. Let me share with you a few appropriate words spoken in the aftermath of 9-11 by Queen Elizabeth II. Grief is the price that we pay for love. 
Grief is the price that we pay for love. And I can see by those that we are remembering here today that that love is still deep and undiminished. So I have the honor of introducing, joining us today to continue our 9-11 observance, Loretta and Vincent Vigilone, who will truly never forget. Loretta lost her brother, Tommy Savella, a 44-year-old member of Ladder Company 13 of the Fire Department of New York. The loving father of two young children died while evacuating people at the North Tower. So again, I have the honor of introducing them as Loretta reads a poem. Thank you both for being here. Loretta. Thank you. Good evening. I was going to introduce my brother, but you so delightfully did for me, so thank you. Um, I have two sons, and my oldest one left to go into the Air Force. My youngest son, his name is Mark Viglione, and he just sat down and started writing this poem. Words just came to him, and they're the best words ever. He wrote this poem titled, A Day Like No Other. A day we thought would be just another turned out to be a day like no other. We saw the horror with our very own eyes as we listened to our loved ones' desperate cries. Everything we thought of as our deepest, darkest fears became a true reality which shed of our tears. Our minds were confused, our hearts filled with sorrow, but as we looked upon today and feared what would come tomorrow, the bravest and the finest knew exactly what to do. They sifted through the rubble, but they only found a few. The terrorists completed their mission by taking innocent lives away. But now they have to realize there's a hefty price to pay. This is by far the worst disaster we have ever known, but we stand together in this fight so no one is alone. We know it may take time before this ugly war has ended, but all the broken pieces will eventually be mended. Um, in this time of remorse, will continue to stand tall and live with liberty and justice for all. There are many things left that we must carry out. Before putting anything done, we must proudly shout, God bless America. Thank you. Bert, thank you, Loretta, and thank you, Paul, for your words. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Commissioner Deborah Smith. And our, the two of them are just so aspi uh, inspiring. And I have that poem uh, framed in my office. Loretta shared it with me. And um, I listen to those words and I read it when I go into my office. We admire each of you, your strength, your dedication to carry on the memory of those you've lost. This annual ceremony, just like this memorial, honors and embraces the memory of all of those killed on 9-11. However, each year, we specifically read aloud the 64 people linked to Morris County as we share and light our candles to honor them. Reading the names today will be my fellow commissioners, Thomas Mastrangelo and Douglas Cabana. So let us share the candles now as we now, as our guest musicians play, it is well with our with my soul. Composed by Philip Paul Bliss in 1873, the lyrics were penned by Horatio G. Spafford, and we included four lines in your program today. 
It is a song of hope from a man who lost his business holdings in the 1871 Chicago fire, then lost his four-year-old son to scarlet fever, and soon after all four of his daughters drowned in the Atlantic Ocean when their ship went down in an accident. After enduring such unimaginable personal tragedies, he tells us in song that faith carried him through. It can carry us all. Thank you. Donald Leroy Adams, Margaret L. Benson, John Paul Bacci, Martin Borsuski, Dennis Buckley, Celie M. Kajuma, Liam Callahan, David G. Carlone. James Leslie Crawford, Jr. Joseph DeLuca. Captain Robert Edward Dolan. Antoinette Dugar. Greg J. Froner. Elaine F. Gentle. 
Deborah Lynn Fisher Gibbons. Paul Stewart Gibbons. Gail R. Green. Eileen Marsha Greenstein. Gary Robert Haig. Timothy Robert Hughes. Anthony P. Infante Jr. Jason Kyle Jacobs. Jun Kubu Kang. Lucille King. Angela R. Kite. Robin Blair Larkey. Thomas B. Linehan Jr. Sean Patrick Lynch. Simon Madison. Alfred Russell Mailer. Christian Hartwell Maltby. Hilda Marson. William J. Martin Jr. Philip W. Mastandrea Jr. William A. Matheson. Robert D. Matson. Patrick J. McGuire. Martin Paul Mickelstein. Seth Allen Morris. Peter C. Motus. Alexander Napier Jr. Michael O'Brien. Michael John Peschen. Thomas H. Polemus. David Allen James Rathke. Richard C. Rescorla. Antonio Augusto Tomei Roca. James Romito. Stephen Harris Russo. Thomas Sabella. Maria Teresa Santillian. Matthew Carmen Salido. Karen Lynn Seymour Diacrypt. Barbara A. Shaw. Francis Joseph Skidmore Jr. Michael C. Sorisi. Thomas S. Strata. Edward W. Staub. Kenneth J. Swinson. Dennis Gerard Taramina. William R. Testi. Peter Gruda Wallace. Matthew David Yarnell. Mark Zangrilli. Kenneth Albert Zellman.
And so, we close another 9-11th observance ceremony in Morris County on a very cloudy and wet Sunday afternoon. So different from that bright sunny day in 2001. I sincerely thank all of you for coming out this evening to join us in this solemn remembrance. I almost must thank all the first responders who come here every single year. The public who participated and the public officials who join us especially in such miserable weather. Speaking of the weather and the forecast we had, that prompted so many people to ask me, so what's the rain date? As a Marine Corps veteran reminded me one rainy Memorial Day in Mountain Lakes, the women defending our freedoms around the world and the first responders protecting our homes and our businesses get to have a day off for rain. They don't get a rain date. So I want to thank the many department heads also handled so much of the vital support and effort for this ceremony. And a special thank you to our communications director, Brian Murray, who choreographs this entire afternoon with precision and with grace. Held our vigil for two decades now, most years at this memorial, which was constructed in 2003. It's a unique monument in so many ways. And it's tended to by our buildings and grounds personnel. Chris Walker and his crew for doing that. It's also much more than a monument to a heartbreaking moment in our sacred history. It was constructed as a place for people to visit and reflect. If you have spent time to know of the deeply spiritual nature of this bill. It is really a really special place, and I believe our annual ceremony is also unique and so necessary to continue each year, regardless of weather conditions. September 11th must remain a day to remind ourselves what it means to be Americans, the price we must pay to be prepared um, for our, to protect our freedoms, as well as the reward that living in this great free nation brings. Our ceremony has ended, and we invite you to take some time to reflect at our 9-11 memorial. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen. Mm -hmm.